Hello, welcome to Reso Coder. In this tutorial, we are going to make a simple calculator app in Xamarin Android. Well, at least the UI part of it. In the second part, we are gonna be coding the logic of the calculator. Knowing how to make the UI efficiently and quickly is as important as the C-sharp code driving the calculator though. Also, if you want to know the absolute basics of making a Xamarin Android app, you would greatly benefit from another tutorial of mine. If you are interested, click the card in the corner. Now let's get started. First up, we are gonna make a project. You wanna open Visual Studio and now go to File, New, Project. You wanna select Visual C Sharp and then Android. If Android isn't here, you should definitely check out the tutorial which I have mentioned previously. Now you wanna select blank app and we are gonna name this app something cool. Alrighty, and now you just wanna click on OK. And alright, we have an app created. As I've already said, in this tutorial we are gonna be mostly dealing with UI. So we wanna go to resources, layout, main AXML. We wanna double click on that to open it. This main.axml file contains the UI of this app. You might be already familiar with XML. Well, AXML is basically just an XML, it's just that Visual Studio distinguishes between AXML and XML. That's because AXML file, as opposed to XML ones, can also show up in the designer as you see here. But basically they are otherwise the same. We aren't gonna be working with the designer though, so we wanna open the source code down here, or you can also just right click on this main.axml and press on view code. So let's add a UI to our app. We are gonna leave the root element to be a linear layout, about which I have a separate tutorial. We don't want this linear layout to end like this, so we are gonna delete this slash and put a pointy bracket and slash linear layout and we are all set. Inside this linear layout, we wanna have a text view to display the calculation and also the result. But having just a simple text view isn't gonna cut it. We wanna be able to scroll through the text when we enter long numbers. For this, we are gonna put this text view inside the horizontal scroll view. So we wanna add a horizontal scroll view over here. This horizontal scroll view will have width of match parent, so Android layout width is equal to match parent and Android layout height will be 0 dp, so it will have no height by default. That's because we are gonna assign weight to this horizontal scroll view, so Android layout weight is equal to 1. Weight is an attribute used by the linear layout, which is the root element. Views with the same weight value occupy the same space on the screen. So inside this horizontal scroll view we wanna have a text view. This text view needs to have an ID. That's because in the second part we are gonna get this text view in the code and we will want to change the displayed text. If this text view didn't have an ID, we wouldn't be able to get it from the code. So Android ID is equal to at plus ID slash calculator text view. This text view is gonna have width of wrap content and height of match parent. Also, it's gonna have a padding of 10 density independent pixels, so 10 dp. We use padding over here because we want the text inside this text view to have a bit of space from the edge of the screen. And also, we wanna specify a text size. We don't want the text to be too small, so we are gonna specify 50 scale independent pixels or sp. DPs and SPs are pretty much the same and they are actually the same until the user changes some setting inside the Android operating system. The user of your app can decide to scale up the text size. When he does that, he expects every text inside every app to be scaled up. That's why you use SP inside the text size of a text view. Otherwise, you use DP because you don't want the padding to scale up as well. You just want the text size to scale up if the user desires so. Alright, and just for good measure, let's put a text inside here. So Android text and this will be 1, 2, 3 for example. Now let's check out the designer. And yeah, we have 1, 2, 3, but currently this text view takes up the whole screen. That's because we've assigned the layout weight attribute a value of 1. So now let's go back to the source code. And let's add all the buttons that you expect inside the calculator, like numbers and operators. The perfect way to do this is with a grid layout. It's simple and efficient. But there's a problem though. We want the grid layout to stretch across the screen. 
Older devices running Android KitKat or lower are gonna have a problem with this. We need to use a support library to be able to have the same look even on pre-Lollipop versions of Android. To add a support library you wanna right click on References, now Manage NuGet Packages, click on Browse here and search for Android Support Grid Layout. We wanna select the one which was released by Xamarin Incorporated and we wanna install it. And we are good to go. If you want to learn more about grid layout and also about its support library alternative, check out my tutorial which covers it in detail. Now we need to add a new namespace called app. We are gonna add it just below this XMLNS Android. And XMLNS obviously means XML namespace. And we want to write XMLNS app. This is gonna be equal to HTTP colon slash slash schemas.android.com slash apk slash ras auto. As opposed to the Android namespace, the namespace called app which we've just created will simply put not pull stuff from the Android OS but rather from the app itself. This is important because remember that older versions of Android don't support certain things that the grid layout can do. Finally, let's add a grid layout from the support library over here. We want to add it after the horizontal scroll view and we want to write android.support.v7.widget.grid.layout. We can copy the attributes of the scroll view and paste them in here, but this grid layout won't have the weight set to 1 but rather to 4. Also, it will have orientation set to horizontal, but this time the orientation attribute is not from the Android namespace, but rather from the app namespace. If you have these kind of formatting problems, you can just go to the designer, and now come back to the source code, and you're all set. Also, it will have row count of 5, again from the app namespace, and column count will be set to 4. The grid layout is of no use if it doesn't contain buttons. Let's add them. As the first step, we wanna make just one button. The others are gonna be pretty much the same, they will just display different text. So we wanna add a button. It's gonna have layout width and layout height set to zero density independent pixels. The reason for this is that we are again gonna be using weight. But unlike in the grid layout itself, here, we want even the width to stretch out dynamically. Now we want to add the weight, but not just one as with the linear layout. Grid layout has rows and columns, so we want to add weights for each one of them. So we want to write app, layout, row weight, this is going to be equal to 1, and also app, layout, column weight, which is also going to be equal to 1. The text size should be 25 scale independent pixels. And also we want to specify the name of the method which is going to get called when the button is clicked. We are going to write this method in the second part of this tutorial, so subscribe to this channel if you don't want to miss it. We want to write Android on click, and this is going to be equal to the name of the method which is going to be called, for example, button click. Cool, and now let's go to the designer. You can see that we have one big button right here. It currently doesn't have any text on it because we haven't specified it yet. But now let's go back to the source code. Now that we have the first button, we could just copy and paste it 15 times. But what if we want to change something later? Will we really need to change the same code 15 times? Thankfully, we don't have to do this. We can create a style and then apply it to all the buttons. Then, if we need to change something later, we can just change it in one place and it's gonna apply to all buttons. So we wanna create a new file called styles.xml inside this values folder, so right click on it, add, new item, it's gonna be a plain xml file, so not axml, although axml would be completely fine as well, and we wanna call it styles. But again, you can call it whatever you want, it's just that styles is a standard name. Inside here we want to add a resources xml element, also a style element, with the attribute name, equal to button calculator. Alright, and now we want to put everything that we have assigned to our button over to this style. So let's go to the main.axml, copy everything that we have added to this button, and paste it inside styles.axml. This is not valid though, but we can use it as a template. Inside this style we want to add a new item, 
name is gonna be equal to Android layout width and the value is 0DP. We want to do the same kind of conversion for all of these things. Keep in mind though that when you have an app namespace here, you don't want to put any namespace over to this item. So we just want to write layout row weight, just like this. Alright, now that we have all of this, we can safely delete our template. Let's go back to the main.axml and we can delete all the attributes from this button. The button will have a style attribute and it's gonna be equal to add style slash the name of the style. In this case, we want to use the button calculator, which is precisely the name which we have set inside this styles.xml. Also, we want to add a text to this button and this is gonna be the delete button. So Android text is equal to DEL. Now let's check out the designer again and you can see that we have one big delete button over here. Now in the final UI, we want this delete button to stretch across the whole grid layout. This grid layout has four columns, so we want to add a layout column span attribute and we want to set it to four. So app layout column span and this is gonna be equal to four. Now we can copy this button, paste it, this one should not have a column span set to four and the text will be seven. Now we can just copy and paste this button 14 times. But we don't want all the buttons to say 7. Let's change it up a bit. Also, I want to remind you that you can get the code from the link in the video description. Wow, that's a lot of changes. Now let's go to the designer and it finally starts to look like a proper calculator. This is where we end the first part of the Xamarin calculator tutorial. We made a fully fledged calculator UI and we used a support library and a custom style in order to save us from doing a lot of copy and paste. That's quite a bit of work. If you would like to see quite a bit more advanced simple scientific calculator, please check out OneCalc. It's a calculator made with you in mind. OneCalc has many material themes you can choose from and it's ready to help you with all of your calculation needs. You can get it from the link in the video description. So, if this video helped you, please give it a like and also share it. Subscribe to this channel if you wanna know about my new videos and if you don't wanna miss anything, be sure to smash that bell button. If you have anything to say, please leave a comment. Follow me on social media and see you in the next video.